Okay, I have Sean McPherson with me today, who is the bass player for a great hip-hop band, High Respects. He's also the bass player and band leader for Dessa, Dessa Darling, another great performing group. And in addition to that, Sean, you teach at McNally Smith. You help coordinate summer programs. You also work in other administrative capacities. And in addition to that, uh, you are, I believe, co-owner or one of the heads of the Trivia Mafia mm -hmm. in the Twin Cities community. So among all these things, I mean, that's, that's quite a career. Is that a career you would recommend to our students? It, it is a career I would recommend uh, to your students. And it's a career, frankly, I recommend to students as I teach. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that um, I, I talk a ton in classes about residual skills that you develop in the music world. So no part of me as I was uh, starting up with High Respects and learning how to write press releases and booking shows and things like that said this is going to be great ammunition for when I'm a trivia host. It just you know didn't come into my mind. But um, I built up this ability to sort of communicate about uh, finances, to communicate about promotions, and to communicate with bar owners, which takes a certain uh, sophistication and unsophistication to make things happen in the bar world. And those type of skills, not everybody gets those. And if you have those and you got them through loving music, at some point you might have to diversify uh, to see something happen. A big uh, thing that I talk about is that as a bass player, by and large, you can really only make money when you're standing somewhere and playing the bass. For instance, I can you know, write plenty of bass lines that I get to play and occasionally I'll sub out a gig and then maybe I'm getting some publishing if they're playing my songs. But basically, I get paid when I'm holding the bass. Contrary to that, for something like Trivia Mafia, we have 23 nights that happen every week. So it's Thursday, so tonight I'll be in Lakeville, Minnesota running trivia, but somebody else will be in Eden Prairie, somebody will be in northeast Minneapolis, and one other location. So the, we're, I'm generating income, and my company is generating income from all of those things. So that's a, a way to diversify, and I learned that through doing the music business, to be able to call bars and go, are you tired of having it be dead on Mondays? I got something that's not loud, that's not going to scare away the restaurant folks but we'll get new people in there. Yeah, well, you know, I call it a career, and I mean it, it's, it's so impressive to me that you're exactly what I, I think the word entrepreneur means and describes, because you've got all these skills, all these things you put together, and you're making a career that's very diverse and really very interesting, and it seems to me very successful. We're an educational institution. What are the skills you think we need to impart to our students to best prepare them to be entrepreneurial. Maybe their activities are very different than yours, but you piece interesting things together that you like to do, and you're making a life out of it. What are the skills we need to give our students? Uh, interpersonal skills is a, is a really big one. It, it can sort of be a knee-jerk reaction for somebody to say, if you want to be a great dentist, you've got to have interpersonal skills, and if you want to be a great engineer, you've got to have interpersonal skills. I read a bunch about uh, careers and business things, and everybody says that. Uh, the reason I think it's particularly important uh, for musicians is because there's such a surplus of talented musicians who don't have great interpersonal skills. So what distinguishes me from the pack might be the fact that I'm really great at going, oh, I'm, uh, I'm a great collaborator. So, oh, you didn't, you didn't like that part? Let me try something else. Let's work on it this way. Uh, do you want me to come in early and we can get something together? And a lot of times that initiative is really, especially in the ensemble classes I teach, really what I get uh, most excited about in my students. So those students who go, oh yeah, we got together actually on Friday and just went through and redid the chart so it's super easy for everybody to read. And that's not an assignment I gave out on Wednesday. And you know, more so than uh, what happens in the actual class, to me that demonstrates the initiative that gets you called back for gigs. So there's a lot of people who are really fantastic musicians, but uh, those people who come prepared uh, and those people who come with interpersonal skills uh, really do well. Uh, secondly, I think compared to some of the earlier generations of musicians, uh, writing skills, meaning straight up email etiquette skills and formal letter skills, are very important uh, in this world, particularly because for the majority of your career, most of us are not going to have handlers. We're not going to have somebody go, uh, send off a letter saying that we accept the publishing part, but we actually want to do something different for the library agreement. It's not going to happen. So I'm able to save a ton of money by being able to, right up to that point where I have to pay a lawyer, I can just send off the thing and go, oh, you know, we're not, we're not comfortable with a blanket license agreement, but we would do one synchronization or something like that. Being able to just get good paragraphs out 
makes a huge difference. And so I put that in a lot of classes that don't necessarily need to have it. So in our ensemble class, the second week of the class is when people bring in a 12-bar piece. The third week of the class, after you've seen a little bit of the promise of the folks you're around, is when you bring in a paragraph saying what you want to get out of the experience. That's very interesting because the skills that you went to right away are things like uh, you know, showing initiative, being a good writer. Uh, not what what would be the skills though? Those are things you might develop somewhere other than a music school. Sure, you know, showing up on time. Or, or the first thing you said, good personal, interpersonal skills. What in a music school are the things that today are most important? If you had to give advice to young music students just coming to McNally Smith, what would you say they need to really pay attention to? Oh, well, that, that's a great question. Yeah, you're right. I definitely gravitated right no, away. No, it's good, good answer, answer, though. I mean, it's real stuff, you know. Um, a lot of times I get to talk to folks with running the summer programs who say, what can I do before I show up? Yeah. So, you know, I want to be here in two years. What should I do? And I recommend a website that has a theory test on it, and I can't remember the address off. off I got it on my tabs. But um, my uh, theory instructor at McNally Smith, Andy Fleischer, said, oh, here's a great way to just go practice thirds, fifths, sixths, and just listen to them. And so I try to spend 10 or 15 minutes a day doing that, and I recommend that to tons of high school students who have never even really thought about that. And a lot of times, even great band-tracked high school students are not actually um, applying their own theory. So they may very well know exactly what a sixth sounds like, but they don't know that it's a sixth. So I say just get on this software and do a little bit of it every day. Um, that's, that's sort of the, the, the basic theory, and that can really also save you some money when you get here, because if you can test out of ear training one that saves you something and so it's just really valuable um, the other thing I say is get a garage band or get um, a Cubase or get anything even audacity which is completely free get one of these things and start even chopping up recordings uh, of other people's and this is this is the number one thing a lot of times it's really easy to say oh you know uh, go go download garage band if you don't have it and just start playing some stuff on the guitar and in that sentence I might have said to a 15 year old you don't have your own computer, you don't have the 15 bucks to download GarageBand, and you don't have a guitar. So I try to remember, folks are at real different positions in this world, so I just go, uh, even if you're at the school library, you can usually use the web-based Audacity. You can do something. But basically, if people start going, oh, I took 10 seconds of this song and put it right next to 10 seconds of that song, they're starting to realize uh, DA or DAO or what, you know, digital audio workstation. Basically, how do you start chopping <coughs> stuff up and putting it in place? That's, if I could go back, and do something before I got to college, it would be uh, digital editing and more ear training, uh, volunteer ear training. So those are probably the two things, and that's what we need to be educating folks on. Because, you know, interpersonal skills are great, but if you get into a studio session and you don't know what a sixth is, or you keep on hearing the same part and you don't know what it is, that's, that, being shy of that has definitely kept me out of some work early on in my career where people would go, oh man, this cat's great, and then I come in and be like, all right, I just gotta keep working on this, gotta get it down. Those folks who can walk in and do it right away, it's worth something. Yeah, boy, would I agree with you. I mean, I've taught all my life, you know, composition, theory, counterpoint, ensembles, everything else. And if I had to sum it up in one thing, nothing's more important than getting your ears in shape. Yep. And that's uh, a big thing. In our hip-hop program, we have um, ear training as a part of it. And it is um, an uphill battle to get a lot of folks who have worked just in the digital environment to go, why do I need to know how this looks on a piano? When is that going to come up in my life? And a, a big part of um, why I'm getting folks to do it is I go, well, you know, when you have to hire a flute player, do you want to hire that flute player for three hours? Or do you want to hire that flute player for 40 minutes? And go, I wrote out the line. So uh, just play this. Or actually, it sounds like you're off by a half step. Just change that. So you might not ever walk out as a hip-hop producer with the skills to grab a flute and play the line you need. But I would hope that you would walk out of our diploma program with the ability to jot out the intervals. And even if you said, sorry, I didn't treble clef, I know that you might prefer to read an alto clef if you're a, a viola player. Those basic skills um, and also that interpersonal skill. Mm -hmm. So we hire a viola player all the time for Dessa. And she's very well aware that I am often bringing in treble clef things. And she's going, I read, I read alto, but thank you so much for trying. That one time where I took the extra time and said I threw it on finale, I started into alto. She's going, this cat cares, you know? And that matters a lot. Well, Sean McPherson, my hero.